What's going on, guys? So today's guest is a close friend of mine. And, you know, we bonded a lot growing up. And we've been through ups and downs and so many life experiences. And, I mean, it's just crazy the kind of stuff that uh, we see each other doing now. And I'm very proud of him with how far he's come and the, the man he's becoming. And, you know, growing up together, uh, he's four years younger than me. But, dude, we're like best friends. And I think that's pretty cool. So, today's guest is all the way from San Diego, California. And it's my little brother, John Hamrick. It was funny. Because I was doing like a podcast by myself, and that's when Nanny called me. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah, that's when I, I just like. <laughs> I was like, should I answer this? I'm just going to do it on here. Yeah, I was like, like hey. You should answer yeah. it. I was hoping you would, and I watched that shit and die, dude. Because that's the best call. Every time Nanny calls, like, me ever, even at the crib, like, when I'm back home in San Diego and Nanny calls me, I'll be like, boom, speakerphone. I'll be yeah. Like, I'll be like, yo, listen. She, just listen to this. She's like, like to, she called Alyssa the other day talking about how we shouldn't go to New York because people drowned on the ferry. I was like, when the fuck has that ever happened? It was like thousands of people. You picked that reason not to go yeah, to New York. It's like thousands of people ride the ferry every single day for the past like sixty years. I was like, dude, like, nanny, please stop talking to us. I know that's funny. I don't I know. Like, she's fucking nuts with that fucking shit, man. She was like, she said, I must have called you about like eighty times about the fires. And I started bagging up, dude. Like, I started rolling. Yeah, and then she called everyone else. And I was like, like, he's not not even close to him. (laughs) I told her. I was like. One time it was like an hour and a half away or something like that that you said. But then um, when she had, like, brought that up to me about, like, her um, saying she's called me, like, 80 times. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I know. I know you called me 80 times. I was there. I (laughs) I didn't answer. I, like, picked up the phone, dude. I always answer. I have to answer. I have to answer now. I live three thousand miles away, so like yeah. I mean, I have no a, choice. It's the least you can do. What if something but, happens? I'm like, damn! I ignored her call. Yeah. Like, fuck. I but also, she's not gonna call you because something happened. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just gonna call because she's worried or she has something to say to you. Like you know. Yeah. I always know. Like I always know when she calls me, it's just gonna be something like her worrying. I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever, dude. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just because she's worried. I mean, it's she. I don't know. She calls me randomly, and it's always about you. I'm like, you don't care about me. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when I was at grandma's the other day, and she was saying something. I was talking to Haley about how I dropped the basketball hoop on Granddad's windshield. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, I was so scared. Like, I I think Granddad's gonna hate me. Blah blah blah. And Grandma was like, his favorite? Yeah, right. He could never hate you. Everyone knows that. And I was like, oh. Don't yeah, say that. Everyone me. knows. They make it so like easy to see. Uh, it's funny that you know. It's funny that I'm the favorite when I'm I'm about the worst one out of the bunch. Almost. The worst one? What you mean? Like you're not the, the worst, worst kid. No, you're not. I've done way more fucked up shit than you. I've done way more fucked up shit. It has nothing to do with doing fucked up shit. That don't make you a bad kid. It does. I mean no, it don't. bad not bad kid, but it just makes you bad. It makes me bad. It makes me to them, like you know, if oh, they, to them, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. What I'm saying. To that's what I'm saying. That's my point. Is that, yeah, is that they have this idea of me, yeah. But you're doing, I mean, I mean, you're at another extent right now. But you're doing everything that I did when I was in middle school or high, in the beginning of high school. Yeah, that is true. Because I think I got it out of my system early. What's up, everyone? It's Christmas already. Can you believe that? Like, it's ridiculous. Today's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow's Christmas, we're going to wake up and open our presents, and how many of you people have a Run Everything Labs supplement under your tree? I know I probably have a couple, uh, because I got myself them, but <laughs> but um, you go to stnutrition.com, this, is, this sale is going to stay on until uh, New Year's Day, so we're going to have this sale on for New Year's Day, it's going to, it's uh, 20% off each and every product, so it's site-wide, 
that you get. And if you put in the code HOLIDAY, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, the then you'll get your 20% off each every product that you buy on stnutrition.com. So back to this fun podcast. Close up a little bit so I can lean forward. Yeah, and you can pull it up if you need to. I'm going to do that. Oh, this way. Yeah. Oh, swing. Money. But, um... I mean, you sent me that. <laughs> you sent me that video of uh, that was the dude. That was the first night I ever got drunk. That video you sent me the other day. Oh yeah. yeah. Of because uh, you were twenty one, I think. That was because you were twenty one. I was twenty. Yeah, because I was seven, the one. I was like seventeen. I remember. Junior. I was the one buying the beer. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that. yeah. And uh, you were buying Bud Light. Like we were drinking Bud Lights, and yeah. like I drank like I'm four. Still drinking Bud Light. <laughs> That's all um, you need. I drank like four, not even four. I probably drank, dude. Honestly, I like for real. I probably drank maybe, maybe three. I probably like opened the third one and didn't drink it at all. And I was hand. You saw me in that video. I was yeah. like, I was like dude, that was my favorite part. Like, Smack <laughs> my head and shit, like, dude. I was like, dude, how'd you find that? Like, out of all things, out of like. The very first our, night I yeah, was ever dad put Dad put like a bunch of my stuff that was on his computer and sent it to me on in a folder on my Google Drive. Oh. So I was looking for a picture of um, Alyssa oh, okay. for her birth to post for her birthday yeah, or something. Yeah. And um, now I came across some videos <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, oh yes, <laughs> this is gold. <laughs> and I like wanted to. Um, I wanted to send it to Danny or Caleb, uh, and I was just like, uh, I was like, I don't know if they're gonna like find this funny anymore. I was like, yeah, they're all like maybe married. Not. I mean, you're married, married, but like you're different. It's different but like, yeah. but I was like, they're all married, and like Caleb got kids. I was like, maybe he's not gonna find this funny and like yeah. get mad at me for sending it to him. Right. So I was like, um, I'll just keep it to myself. Yeah, I was telling someone the other day about, uh stuff i used to do when i was younger because they talked about me because i told them i was having a party they're like oh are you gonna go like get fucked up blah blah, blah. i'm like <laughs> maybe on beer but nothing else you know <laughs> i mean i was telling stories about uh me and matt the soccer coach yeah, yeah. and then um also uh when me and jordan uh used to do like perks and stuff and yeah, we went facts. to like a party yeah. and i got real sick and then <laughs> like my friends had sex next to me while i was passed out like dude it was like <laughs> but you know the thing is like i understand as a parent like you hate that uh but it's something that i had that's how i had to learn yeah you I mean, know you i have had to, to learn have from to making this mistake way. just because you told me it was bad yeah, yeah. i was like okay but why yeah, got figured out on yourself, right? Like on your own, yeah. and sometimes that doesn't turn out great. Yeah, you know. But I think uh, that was the best thing for me. Definitely, you know? def- all three of us are like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we didn't listen to a goddamn word mom or dad ever yeah, said exactly. to us. You know, I mean, some things we did, some things we listened to. You know, but like, I mean, we listen to it now. Like all the stuff they yelled at us and told us to do differently than. When we were younger, like, I'd take that advice now as a 25-year-old adult who lives on his own. But as a kid, you're not going to take that advice. You need yeah. to figure it out yourself. And then, so as you become an adult, it's like, damn, holy shit, my parents were right. Like, wow, life's crazy. But it's like people at Red Lion, like, uh, I had a lot of friends at school and stuff. Like, I was friends with everyone. I wasn't like like in a total outcast there i was like pretty much cool with everyone because it's a small ass school and i still was an oddball because i was smoking weed i was drinking alcohol and in high school and all these kids like my friends would try to throw my packs of cigs away yeah like that's all you were smoking weed at the school yeah that's what i was trying to get you out of like doing that i'm like bro you gotta be smarter than that but like all those kids that like did that shit to me like threw my cigarettes out would try to throw my weed away and like they're all, all that shit out. they're all fucking doing acid and fucking yeah, like yeah, yeah. some fucking i mean i don't think any of them are on actual drugs but like like because I, I don't count acid as an actual drug it's just right. like a psychedelic not like mm-hmm. drugs like bad drugs yeah 
And I'm like, dude, like you're tripping balls all the time and like mm-hmm. getting shit faced and like heard stories of kids like I went to high school with like passing out on lawns in college and shit. And I was like, dog, like y'all talked all this shit on me. And now look at you guys. That's crazy. That's the same thing that happened to me. Yeah. I mean. You know, I think there was like two of us in my class that like smoked weed or whatever. And they always like, oh, Ben, you're smoking that, blah, blah, blah. Every time I brought it to a party or something. <laughs> uh, oh, you're doing that. Uh, I'm like. But now, and then after high school, when they got to college, guess what they were doing? Yeah, smoking weed. Oh, that's all they were doing. Drinking. They were posting about it. I'm like, calm down. Yeah. Like, been there, done that. Everyone's done it. You're not new yeah, to it. Facts. You know, it's just like kids now. They think they're new to something. Yeah. You know, and uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it was funny because uh, she was like, they were talking about, like, what kids say today, right? Yeah. They're like, do kids stay, still say lit, blah, 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 you know, they say lit. And the girl was like, you know what, you ever heard of uh, Zaddy? They say <laughs> Zaddy. I was like, what? I was like, we said that, like, when we were little. Zaddy. Zaddy. Zam Zaddy. Zam Zaddy got big dick. I know. <laughs> That's what we used to say. I was like, kids are just now <laughs> saying that. Like, they're just, like, repeating stuff that people have already done, and they're just exactly. trying to, you know what I mean? There's nothing think, different. Just like we did nothing different. They're the really. originals of that. Like, you know, they think they're the yeah. founders of these words, of these sayings. I yeah. mean, I thought like that. I thought like that, too. When yeah. I was a kid, like, there's words I probably, I mean, I can't think of anything at the top of my head, but I'm sure that was the case of, like, people who were, like, f- five to ten years older than me when I was 15 saying, like, some fucking whatever fucking lingo I was saying back then. And they're probably like, oh, they think they started all this, rah, 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 like, typical old people shit, like, which is weird, because I find myself feeling old at 25, even though 25 is not old, like, at all, still super young. Yeah, like, and I uh, think what makes you I mean, feel old is, like, when you see other kids. Yeah, that's exactly it, exactly you it. Know? Like, kids we grew up with, like, knowing them as always being way, way younger than you, mm-hmm. these kids are way smaller than you, and all this stuff, and then... I come back home to visit, and they're like, oh, yeah, they're, like, going off to college and all this I'm stuff. Like, and I'm what? like, what? Yeah. Like, college? It's like, yo, I thought you were, like, six. <laughs> like, I thought <laughs> you were, like, like, sixth grade. I thought you were going to be six forever. Like, it's like, you're, a te- like, almost an adult. Like, that's insane. And that's what's wild to me. That's why I always look back, and um, I like to reminisce. Like, I put a post about that. Like, I like to sit back and just think about... Um, not to live back in those times, you know what I mean? But to just really, like, take in how far I've come. Yeah. Because there was a time where I never thought I would get out of high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like You're the reason dude, I, I got out of high school because I said if, if Benj can graduate no, high school, barely, I can graduate high school. You know, I mean, you failed did, eighth but, grade and went to summer school every year yeah. through high school. And I thought I was never going to get out. But now it's been 10 years. I'm like, what? When did I graduate? Graduate 12, didn't Dude, you? No, 13. That's Alyssa. Uh, 13. 13. What year is it? 19. Yeah, so six yeah, years. Six years. That's still, that's a long still time for you. a long time. Shit. Yeah. Like, kids who were, kids who were a grade younger than me, like, growing up in high school, like, yeah. you think those year younger kids are way younger than you, and, like, they're all out of college already. Like, I'm like, holy shit, I never even went. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I never even went. <laughs> I never even did that shit. I went for nine I like, months. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you did super well. I had a baby with it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean you had something, something cool, though, at least. Like, I mean. Yeah, it was good, but I found, but it brought me, like, it definitely opened a door. Yeah. Oh, you know, definitely. and it showed yeah. me, like, different things. Like, I got into bodybuilding, and it, I got into uh, trying to oh, trying to start my own personal training business yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But then that all led me to what I'm doing now because I knew, like, that's just not for me. Yeah. Like, personal yeah. training, man, just not for me. Yeah, I mean, fuck that. You, fuck anything you got to do with dealing with people. Yeah, I that's mean, I, what I do now, you still deal with people. Yeah, but, but I like business. Yeah, I like business, business. That's different. Like, it's like uh, at the scooter farm. Like, yeah, yeah. That type of – the customers at scooter farm that are – annoying and piss me off they don't piss me off nearly as bad as the people at the grocery store man like because i'm working with something that i love so like at the grocery store like yeah i love cheese and i love deli meats but Mm -hmm. like i don't love them that much to give these customers the satisfaction of being right when they're completely wrong so like it's a different different and you don't sit there and learn the ins and outs of deli meats and trying to explain to them the difference (laughs) and what you like about it and (laughs) and and feel good about doing that yeah yeah. yo yeah this lady really needed help at the counter today in the deli and 
I really explained to her the the chemical compounds in salami. Right. And oh, <laughs> See, really, really brightened her day, man. I yeah. just love what I do. And if you add it to this brioche cheese and just oh, pops, toast, you know? <laughs> to, toast that bread just a little bit longer. <sighs> Delicious. Yeah. But yeah, it's stuff like that. It's, it's work. It's it's all about what you're doing. Right. All about what you're doing based because I mean, like I said, all each custom there's both customer service, but mm-hmm. you still have the same assholes coming in being the same yeah. type of dickhead mm-hmm. and it's easier for me to deal with them working around stuff that I love to do mm-hmm. rather than working around stuff that I don't love to do because I walked into the grocery store every single day hating my life. Yeah. And I don't do that with what I do now, so. Yeah. So I've always wondered this like what what pulls you towards scootering over skateboarding? You know what I'm saying? Because you do yeah. video photography mostly. Yeah. You're not so much of a rider anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you do I it mean, for fun. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you do people, it for fun. People love when I post videos of me riding, you know, and I never expect it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I get, I mean, I'm not trying, like, I don't give a fuck about Instagram and, like, getting followers mm-hmm. and likes and shit. Like, yeah. I have my, I have the scooter farm account to worry about for that, you know? Right. But um, on my account, I'll, I'll post like some bullshit ass clip that I got at the skate park, and I'll get as many as many likes as I do followers. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm just like, whoa! I'm like, really? This many people like like to watch me ride? Like, out of all the people that I hang out with, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of surprising to me. But I mean, I definitely wouldn't consider myself a rider because all I do is film and play xbox these days yeah i don't really do too much riding i'm pretty been pretty lazy but but what, what pulls you towards like scooter like filming for and video and so filming and uh taking photos for scooters rather than skateboarding um because skateboarding uh, there's probably a bigger yeah, uh, thing you know definitely bigger yeah um, more magazine um harder to it's the same reason um like in the scooter industry people going pro is like breathing yeah it's like no big fucking deal like Mm -hmm. everyone goes pro which is stupid like it should not be like that skateboarding you have dudes that are am that for one skate for a local shop for years Mm -hmm. skate for a local shop their whole life basically turn am for somebody become an amateur skateboarder um be an am skater for 10 fucking years and during those 10 years, you you film videos and prove that you're even better than the pros, but you still don't go pro. Right. Um, so it would be like, and so when skaters go pro, it's huge. It's, it's a party, dude. Like, mm-hmm. they throw huge parties. It's surprises. Like, it's like a dream come true, you know? Yeah. And the scooter industry has just watered that shit down so heavy. Um, so it's easier for me to get into the scooter scene uh, as a filmer and photographer because one john dev because uh, there's so many tommy tommy there. christiana nick tedrick all the dudes i grew up with yeah. are the best in our industry and i grew up with them and they didn't have filmers and yeah. i was bored and had a camera so i'd film these dudes and shoot photos and you're good at it and it's like i told john dev i was like dude if the scooter industry ever dies i was like i'll move back to delaware because there's a i have a handful of friends um that live in delaware that are phenomenal skaters they've been on trans world they've been on every uh like skateboard instagram ever like there's like a whole bunch of different like skateboarding instagram that just strictly post skateboarding videos they're not necessarily like a team Mm -hmm. but it's just like an instagram for skateboard content that have millions of followers and they've been posted on those they've been on thrasher like they've been on all the dude and they're from delaware and they don't get any recognition they barely get the recognition because they're from Delaware, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, I was like, dude, Scooter Industry dies. I'll come here. I'll film these dudes' legit videos. And then maybe I could get into the skateboard industry because I don't want to, I don't want the scooter industry to die and me have to go work at the grocery store or go do freelance photography and that type of bullshit. Like, I'm not into that. I don't want to do weddings. I don't want to do anything like that. Oh, yeah. Like, I want to, I I like, I like skateboarding. I like scootering. Like, anything that has to deal with that is, like, my forte. Mm -hmm. That's what I've grown to, at least, within these past three years. I wasn't always like that. I was always all cinematic with my videos, you Mm -hmm. know? Always wanted to, like, have the best quality and all that, blah, blah, blah. And 
today I'm more focused on the reality of the video. That's mm-hmm. why I shoot with what I do. Right. So like, and the dudes who do live out here, they don't have filmers like that. They don't have anyone to film them. They film them with their DSLR with a rocking on fisheye that every 10 year old gets for Christmas that skates like. Now you can get a fish eye on your phone. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's terrible. Terrible. That's good for fingerboarding. Like, that shit right, John right, does. Yeah. Like, that's good for that. But not for, like, real scooter videos, yeah. obviously. But, um, I mean, the camera I use is what they, the Thrasher dudes use. Like, mm-hmm. it's what skateboarders use. Like, real skaters. So I'm like, these dudes ever need a real filmer and I'm out of a job? <laughs> I'll come here. I'll work at the grocery store, film them. And then try to work my way up in the skate industry, just like I did with the scooter industry. Yeah. Like, so what? That just I don't understand. Like, so why um, is scootering like kind of watering itself down? Are they just trying to get like a handful of like a sh- like a shitload of pros? Um, because skateboarding already has that and it's been around for so long. Huh. I would. That seems weird. I would say the watering down of. of scootering like the watering down of turning people pro it being a big deal Mm -hmm. is the lack of rider owned companies okay lack of it's mostly corporate yeah lack yeah like uh crisps crisp scooters the company john dev Mm -hmm. used to ride for um dude the dude who ran that was a really cool dude uh he owned the he owned a distribution called turnstile brands that's what hershey worked for and um, he distributed like Crisp, Grit, like all these other scooter brands and stuff like that. And um, he's the one who was paying. So basically, John Dev rode for Turnstile. Right. He basically rode for Turnstile. And Frank is the dude. He a uh, uh, super smart businessman, super good dude too. Like I would never talk down on Frank. He's a super awesome guy. But um, he was just a big corporate dude. He didn't know anything about scootering. He knew about business. He knew how to make money. money. He yeah. saw that kids were super into these kinds of scooters and weren't on the Razor scooter anymore. Yeah. So he was like, ooh, boom, sees money signs. And um, and like John Dev was getting a really, really good paycheck from them. Very, very good paycheck. And then um, you have other companies um, that can barely – like can pay $200 a month. Like that's the, that's like, Mm -hmm. that's the minimum right now in the scooter industry is $200 a month for a pro. Jeez. For a pro. But then you have other companies that are super corporate and little kids just want to suck their fucking dicks for some reason when they have the worst scooters. Yeah. Like it's clear to all of us who have been riding scooters for over, well over 10 years I've been riding since 2006, and her, like Hershey started in like 2001, yeah. before I even thought you could do tricks on a scooter, you know? And um, they're eating up everything, dude. They eat up all the money. They eat up all the sales. There is, there's no more kids. I mean, there are still some. There's a handful of kids that look up to the street side of scootering and look up because that's what skateboard. That's what happened to skateboarding. Yeah. Skateboarding would be nothing without street. Right. Like. If they just kept it vert for its whole like life, it would have died. Yeah, yeah. Skateboarding would have died again. And another thing about scootering is that at the, the point we are in the scooter industry right now, um, in, at that time in skateboarding, skateboarding had already died. Right. Like skateboarding died for years, for a couple of years, and they tore down all the skate parks. It was like in like the, what was it, the 90s, I think, or 80s? 80s or 90s was when skateboarding like fell off hard and like people started knocking down uh skate parks skate shops were closing down companies were shutting down i do no remember, i think it was after that movie grind, like whenever grind was nah because was bam margera was very famous at the time of grind grind was like 2000 but he wasn't famous for skateboarding though he's famous for his shows and well, all that kind of stuff well no 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 skateboarding died like rodney mullen days Oh wait, like Rod, Rod, okay, you're talking about yeah, Rodney Mullen, yeah. Chad Muska. Yeah, yeah, even yeah, yeah. even before Chad Muska. Ah, uh, no, nah, Chad Muska. He was the same time as Rodney Mullen. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, around that time, like yeah. probably 80s or 90s. Mm-hmm. I'm not not sure, but we probably surpassed 90s, that already. Yeah. Scootering scootering surpassed that already. So um, that kind of gives me hope. <laughs> I mean, to an extent, that gives me hope of being able to do what I do for the rest of my life. But 
No, I think I think there always, there's always going to be a uh, one for it. Yeah, you know, oh, I think it's sure. about, and especially with the scooter farm, it's important. Like, it's important to have a place like that. You know, to have a place where you could teach kids like what kind of scooters are right and yeah, what yeah. brands are right what's to look for, it, because kids are going to look at what's popular. You know, and they're not going to know yeah. if it's corporate. They're not going to know yep, if it's yep, exactly. You know, they're going to want what all their friends want. Kids coming all the time. Well, my friend Jimmy, he has this. And I'm like, well, your friend Jimmy's an idiot, kid. I'm like, yeah, who man. are you going to listen to? I'll bet you're going to listen to me. I get bitches. Yeah. Like, what does, Jimmy, what does Jimmy get? I can do this. Jimmy gets nothing. Yeah. Jimmy can't even bunny hop. I was like, fuck Jimmy. Like, I yeah, hate man. that I mean, stuff. Like, and that's how it is. That's how it is. Kids, kids dude, are it's always going to do that, dude. It's They're the same thing with supplements. All that shit. Same thing with supplements. You know, you got the big names that are corporate owned, and they're just trying to push this bullshit. They don't care about the industry. They don't care. You they know, want money. As long as they make the as money, money good. as long as they make money, they're cool. And that's you know? how it is. Which it's is a big part of it, but it's still like you don't care what the people are actually taking. Yeah, exactly. Because these dudes, these dudes, corporate fucking dudes who are running all these, there's like probably four or five huge corporate companies in scootering that are very, very, very popular to right. the kids, and they make a shit ton of money. They pay their am riders. Who just do fly out tricks? They don't know how to ride a scooter. They can't. They can do all these crazy flippity doo tricks, but they can't board slide a flat bar. Like mm-hmm. it's like, dude. It's like that's like being able to three sixty under the legs windmill dunk, but you can't do a layup. Right. Like what coach is going to pick you to be on their team? Who cares yeah, if you can you dunk can't like do that? An easy layup, you can't. Right? E- you can't do an easy layup. You can't dribble. Yeah. You can't shoot. Can't do anything with a basketball except dunk it. That's what these kids are. Mm. That's what it's like. And they're eating up all the money. And it's all going to a waste because all it's going to is these corporate dudes who like sell hot tubs for a living. Yeah. They're just doing the scootering shit on the fucking side. They don't even care. And then you got you got like my owner, Doug, you got him putting his blood, sweat, and tears into this scooter cup. Doug doesn't ride a scooter. Doug's 6'2", 250 pounds. So he don't ride no scooter. I was like, he's never ride, rode a scooter, never skated, never did any of this. But he just knew but it was he, something that it could build. But he, yeah, they saw an opportunity and they took it. And he loves scootering. You should watch him sell stuff at the scooter farm. Like, dude, he knows about all these, like, dude, he knows so much about scootering within, from like just the past five years he's had the shop, you know. And that shows like, like, we're not even technically a rider owned. I mean, technically we're rider owned because like me, John, Tom, we all work at the scooter farm and stuff. But like when it comes down to the bosses, like Bo was a skater. Yeah. Bo ran Dreg skate shop. Um, really famous, very famous skate shop from like the eighties. And, um, he was like a surfer and like owned bars. It's like, and he just randomly found scootering and decided to open a shop. And so like I have, Two bosses that have absolutely nothing to do with scootering yeah. who love this shit just as much as I do. Yeah. And I've been scootering since I was 11. Yeah, man. I mean, that's the best reason to. And you know what's funny is that it gives me hope as someone that wants to open my own store when I look at that scooter farm. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's totally do two, two different things. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, but the same but from a business ideal and the same view, passion. The same thing. Yeah. You know, I have the same passion for what I want to give to people. Yeah, for you know, sure. and that's why I'm carrying brands that I believe in. Yeah, not that I think is going to sell the best. Yeah, you know, maybe it yep. won't be. That's what we do. We do the exact same thing. We people, why don't you guys carry fusion scooters? I was like, um, because they Cause break all the time. <laughs> I was like, we had a million of them come in here broken all the time. I was yeah. like, and we we're tired of giving out warranties. Yeah. I was like, that's why. I was like, we don't trust them. We don't like them, and they're douchebags. Yeah. So like, and they break, and they're gonna, they probably make it so it breaks all the time, so you keep buying. Exactly, them. which is the complete opposite of what you should be doing. Right. The complete opposite. Like, ah, oh, terrible mindset to have as yeah. in, in our industry. It's a good mindset if you like want to make a shit ton of money. Right. I mean, I wouldn't recommend going in the scooter industry if you want to make a shit ton of money, but. They're smart dudes for it. Like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing anything for money. Like, yeah, you gotta you gotta give the dudes credit, like the business dudes, yeah. because I mean, they're eating up all our money that we should be getting. You know? Like, yeah, yeah but I think cocky, I think eventually but, I think eventually it'll sw- it'll turn. Uh, it could. I mean, I mean, you the know, I reason- think the longer you stay with it, and the people, 
uh, when those kids get older and if they stick with scootering, oh, yeah. they're going to understand. And, and that's the scariest part, dude. That's Cause the that's how the supplement part. industry is now. Like the scariest part of that, what you just said is, um, there's so many super talented scooter riders that felt kind of fell off from scootering, like real scootering, like filming video parts, going out, riding spots, all that type of shit, like entering contests and that type of stuff. And, uh, they're all like YouTubers now. And, they're so famous on YouTube. They have millions of subscribers and make so much money off YouTube. And, like, good for them, dude. Like, stoked for you. Stoked you're doing well for yourself, you know. But their demographic is the kids that come into our shop. I guarantee you if they keep watching those videos and that's what they look up to, they're going to wake up one day when they're 16 and they start growing pubes and getting all horny. And they're going to be like, Damn. Girls are sexy. Like, I want to get with girls. Yeah, I don't want to watch his dumb YouTube stuff right, anymore. Yeah. Scootering's whack. Yeah. I don't, because that's what he does. He, he's a scooter rider, and that's what they'll see him as. They'll see you, they'll see these dudes always as a scooter rider, and they're going to grow up and hate that shit. Yeah. The reason I stayed loving this stuff my whole life was because growing up, I watched skateboard videos of. Dudes partying, chugging beers, yeah. with titties bouncing in their face and stuff, right, and, yep. and them shredding, like cool B roll of like their parties, right. and then them just like tearing up like downtown New York, yeah. downtown Philly, like all these spots, and then even when I moved to San Diego, uh, my friend Zach, like Zach Martin, like he would take us to spots, and I'd be like, dude, like. I've seen this in videos before, yeah. like what the fuck, like I'm really here right now, like. That's insane. Like, uh, ah, dude, who tried it? The uh, Leap of Faith. Do you remember that in Tony Hawk's Underground? Was it Tony Hawk's Underground? Leap of Faith. I think it was in, well, it's, it was a real dude. There's a Leap of Faith. It's this, uh, it's at like a school. It's this stair, staircase. Oh, uh, yeah, I see it's like a wrap, that. It's like a, it's like a wraparound staircase, but then there's like a, a cutoff at the top where there's like a, like a metal gate like blocking off so you don't fall off because it's huge it's yeah. called the leap of faith because it's the fattest drop ever and like yeah. a dude tried it like a long ass time ago and didn't land he tried to ollie it and it's huge and like it's in la i'm pretty sure and uh we like were riding la a couple years ago and like we rode by it and someone was like dude there's a leap of faith like i look over and saw it and i was just like dude holy shit like I grew up watching like this shit and like they've based these spots in video games like in Tony Hawk and in all the skate games like Man. Skate 3 like there's spots in that game that like I've been to Tony Hawk's Underground yeah. they have Brooklyn Banks they had the Brooklyn Banks in uh, Tony Hawk's well, Underground they got FDR don't they I know one of the video games has yeah, FDR yeah one of them did have FDR yeah they did that's the only one I've been to that's been like, like dude, famously like, known yeah. Yeah. but it's like dude. all the Philly all the Philly riders like so that's yeah, that's pretty crazy seeing that kind of stuff, and it's like that's what I looked up to as a kid. Yeah, that's the type of shit I looked up to. I looked up to riding stuff that you're not supposed to ride. Yeah. To me, that's what skating was all about as a kid. Skating was not about going to the skate park. Like skate park's practice. Skate park is everything's perfect. Everything's meant to be touched that way. Right. You know. You know what I loved about you when you were younger, man? Like you didn't care what no one thought. Yeah, like mean, you weren't trying to like me yeah. i was acting like my friends mm -hmm. you know what i mean i was trying to like like i took on inline skating which i really liked at the time but it wasn't something i was gonna stick, stick with stick with forever you know yeah, where i facts. thought i was but like i was only doing that because i wanted to be different within my friends because my friends all skateboarded so but i couldn't like tell them about playing basketball because that didn't have that in common. didn't have that in common. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Facts. So I had to talk to other friends about that, mm -hmm. you know? And I was just so, like, trying to find myself, whereas you were, like, young and you already knew who you were. Yeah. You know? And you still, to this day, like, you still, you know, you still did the same thing. Yeah. You know? You, so it, I don't think, I always it, think that's pretty cool. It was weird growing up that way. It was weird growing up already knowing who I was. Um, just because at the time I didn't re I mean, I kind of realized it, but like I would have girlfriends and shit in like high mm -hmm. school and they like, you want to change you? They, no, but they would all like talk about like depression and like talk about like being sad and all these emotions that like, I never really, 
I never really like paid attention to those feelings, you know. Like yeah, until you got older. I, yeah, until uh, <laughs> because back then, you know what they didn't do? They did not. They didn't tell us that we're anxious or depressed. Yeah, like they do now. Yeah, yeah. You know, kids are noticing that because they're being told it's that. Being told. Yeah. Back then, we didn't know that, kid, but we I, both deal with something like that. Because I, I, I didn't start feeling. I didn't had like literally. I've never had an anxious bone in my body yeah. until I moved away from home right when i moved away from home and moved to san diego oh excuse me <laughs> that was really when like i was like holy shit like what am i feeling right now yeah like what is this like i mean i'll just smoke weed and i'll be fine but like this was for it starts get, it started to get a little bit worse with me uh like a year down the road, like living out in San Diego. And I mm-hmm. kind of was like lost at a point, like mm-hmm. didn't know what to do because, and it, it was so confusing because as a kid, not even a kid, like just being in high school, middle school, all of that, like even a couple years out of high school, mm-hmm. I never felt like that. I was always just, I always had like my mind, my mind, my body, spirit, all that shit was always, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So if anything wrong happened to me in my life, anything bad, anything troublesome or anything like that, my mind and body and everything was always just instantly, boom, oh, fuck it. Like, everything's going to be okay. I'll try to figure this out. What do I have to do to get this fixed? What do I have to do to do this? Blah, blah, blah. But then um, I had like a really bad acid trip, like pretty bad. Uh, It wasn't because of the acid. It was a situation going on in the house at the time that was kind of freaking me out. And was making me like super anxious. And um, I like tripped for like 24 hours. I like was up. I like I, uh, stayed in my room for like two days. Didn't come out of my room for two days. Didn't Jeez. eat. Just drank water. Like didn't do anything for two whole days. And that was when um, I had to quit smoking weed. Yeah. Because it would make me anxious. Mm. And I would be like when I was sober I would be like oh like. I'm okay. Like, that was just a crazy, crazy time. Like, I'll forget about all that stuff. It's all in the past. Like, all the stuff I was thinking while I was on that bad trip is all gone now. Mm-hmm. It's all done with. And then I would try to smoke some weed just like I normally do, and it would start making me freak out. My heart would race, and my mind would just go crazy and crazy, and I didn't know what to do. Like, so I quit. I just quit for six months and uh, got bored and started smoking weed again. Just started microdosing less, like, real tiny, tiny bits of weed, like, throughout the day and right now i'm back to square one (laughs) back to square one just smoking weed all the time now and i mean dude like helps me work helps me stay focused with work helps me edit well that's why it's it's being legalized everywhere because it does it does do so much you know but and also like certain amount of doses and that's the problem yeah. with people is people like to overdo everything they take. Yeah. Exactly. No matter what it is. Oh, yeah. Food, that's drinks, whatever. That's why anything's bad whatever. for you. That's yeah. why anything is bad for you. Like, yeah. vegan people will tell you, oh, meat's bad for you. Meat's oh, bad dude, for you. And I'm like, I listened. And, and I, I talked to John and Steph. Yeah. Because they're, I mean, John's not a hardcore vegan. He just, he eats vegan for health reasons because he had like a hematoma and like, oh, uh, he had yeah, MRSA yeah. and all that kind of shit. So yeah, like, that can help. So uh, staying away from meat is very good for him. Mm hmm. But um, they don't they don't shove it down your throat or anything. But like sometimes I'll catch a like meat is bad, like for you, like health wise. It's not like, and I'm just like, <laughs> dude, it's it's actually the complete opposite. Scientific. I was like, it's not even it, that. I was like, in a, in a, in excessive amount of anything is bad for you. I said an excessive amount of vegan food is bad for you. <clears throat> Is just as bad for you. you Humans are, are omnivores. Yeah, not carnivores, exactly. not herbivores. We're it's omnivores. So we take in both. But I mean, I don't. I don't have anything against vegan people. Not I don't either because I love vegan. Food. I just hate again, vegan just food like is, I hate Christians shoving shit yeah, in my face. Facts. I'll say the same thing. And you I don't. Know? I don't call myself anyone that shoves trying to shove shit in your face. Like you're not gonna like yeah, it. You're not. not that's gonna not like gonna it. change your mind. Like Reba, the episode of Reba where. Uh, uh, Van, she tries says, to shove God in her face. Yeah, and face. He, she yeah, takes yeah. him to the pastor, and the, the, pastor and the pastor's stuff. like, "Hey, Van, do you want to be here?" And he goes, "No." And he goes, "Okay, okay. you can leave." Yeah, and she freaks out on him. He's like, "Dude, if he doesn't want to do it, then he doesn't want to do it, man." Exactly. That's why you can't. And force that's how nothing. that's how you got to go through life, dude. You got to go through life like that. You can't be shoving that shit down people's throat because. I don't proclaim myself to people as a Christian mm-hmm. because of other Christians. I do the same thing. I when people ask me, what, "Oh, what are you? What, are, what is your religion?" Mm-hmm. I'm just, "Oh, I have a relationship with God." Yeah, like I pray, I'll read the Bible every night. I'm not. 
consistent with it right not as i should be obviously right. like i know that but like dude my relationship with god has nothing to do with you has nothing to do with those people back there has nothing to do with our family yeah. has nothing to do with nobody not even my girlfriend it has yeah. nothing to do with her it has everything to do with me in my own heart exactly so when someone tells me oh christians act like this christians act like that i'm like ha, yeah they do they suck oh well aren't you a christian i'm like yeah but like i, I don't well it's like, like same, I just, saying I, I just believe in god like i believe in god that's I, like, that's like some, saying oh well germans did this yeah aren't you german I, there was german <laughs> jew like you think the German Jews got German Jews, you think exactly. German Jews got off easy? No, exactly, exactly. Like, but you can't, it's, you can't do that. Yeah, man. I mean, but and that's with anything, you know. Like, especially uh, in the fitness world, like it's a huge argument. Like, I listened to uh, uh, Joe Rogan had like two guys. One did his documentary on a uh, shit. What was the um, game changer or something like that? I don't know. He proclaims it not to be a vegan documentary. Oh, but dude, yeah. Dude, this was uh, so yeah. pushing that plant-based shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, right when I turned it on, he was like, oh, you just think it's vegan because you've already seen it. And I was like, I was listening to it, and I was like, no, man, because once I turned it on, and I had never even heard of it. Yeah, once yeah. I turned it on and started watching, I was like, oh, this is vegan. Is this a vegan documentary? I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll watch it. You know, it was about, he was pushing all these athletes that got to where they are because of plant-based yeah, yeah foods okay plant-based when i think plant-based i think it just plants but he's talking about no i meant like uh mostly plants but meat yeah, too i was yeah. like no you didn't i know <laughs> you no know? i mean plant-based does does also mean that as well like if something is based with something doesn't mean that it could be mostly it plants is. yeah it exactly. could be mostly plants, right and that's right. what i agree with yeah, i agree with yeah. you know it should be both it has to be a combination yeah you know mostly exactly and i think the best protein you can get is from animals yeah I mean, uh, I had a, I had a conversation with John a while back. Um, yeah. We were talking about uh, the the protein and broccoli, and um, how I mean broccoli. Not even close. Broccoli, I, legit. not even close. I, I was eating a piece of chicken and I had grilled up, and he was trying to tell me how he said. Um, I said there is no vegetable that has as much protein in this size piece of chicken i have right here in that also size of that vegetable mm -hmm. said there isn't it's it's physically impossible said that it's not how it works right and he was like no broccoli does said broccoli has broccoli's good protein has way more protein than chicken and i looked at him and i said hey john i said where'd you hear that from and i don't remember what he said but i told him i was like i was like broccoli has a good amount of protein in it but you have to eat to get Say say a chicken breast this side has yeah, 20, 20 grams of protein. This yeah. has twenty. I'm just I'm just making this up. Yeah, twenty grams of protein. To get twenty grams of protein out of broccoli, dog, you gotta you gotta have, like have fun, dude. Have fun eating the whole. Have a trough. Yeah, have a whole trough. Of, have a whole mixing bowl of broccoli, dude. That's what like, I'm saying. That's why people that's juice. Not good it's protein, because, man. And that's why people juice is because you have to have so much. Imagine eating all that. That yeah. you have to shove yeah, in a blender exactly. and drink. Yep, yep. You know, and that's what it takes. Yeah. But with meat, it doesn't take like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, but I I agree. It depends on what kind of meat. Yeah. Oh, it definitely does. 100%. So, like for instance, Joe Rogan eats elk, which is probably one of the best, best protein. Yeah, and he proteins kills it you himself. Can. And he does it himself. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's probably the exactly. best way to get it. That's the best way to get it too. And if anything to argue, it's that the hormones and stuff in it. You know, that the people put yeah. in it when they put it in the yeah. grocery store yeah. and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Sure. You know, I understand that. Uh, no, but the whole like no protein, like there's no reason to say none of this, none of that. Yeah. No Why can't it be like, yeah, can't let's be eat both? That's how it's supposed to be. It's how it's, it's, balanced meal. it's literally called a balanced diet. Exactly. And that's all it takes. <laughs> that's, that's what it takes to be healthy. Like, and also being be balanced. And also being healthy is individual. Yeah. You know, you can't do just because I do something, it's not going to work for you. Yeah. I mean, dude, look at uh, Stephanie, John's girlfriend. Dude. Very, very smart vegan, very intelligent vegan, like on on things vegan, and um, eats a very, very well balanced diet. Right, ha ba like, dude, her cooking is phenomenal. And she, is you said the most she is vegan. Oh yes, yeah, very, vegan. very vegan, very, okay. very vegan, and um, she calculates everything. You know, even with clothes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like Doc that's Martens. What, that's what I always like Doc out. Martens. Okay. Like Haley has real Doc Martens, which are leather. And then uh, Stephanie has Doc Martens, but they're fake. 
They're it's it's so vegan ones. Do vegans give vegetarians any shit? No, uh, Stephanie helped Haley a lot. Really? When when Haley wanted to go veget, because when I first met Haley, we were eating chicken nuggets and mac and cheese every night. And oh, so she wasn't vegetarian no, when you first no, met her. No, okay. No. And she uh, she's probably been vegetarian for almost eight months, I would say. And um, cool. Stephanie helped her a lot because Haley was like, "Dude, I don't know what to eat now. Like, what do I eat?" Yeah. And I was like, "Well, the main thing you want to look at is your protein." I said, becoming a vegan and a vegetarian, I said, the, the thing that makes veganism and being a vegetarian make it uh, kind of bad for you mm-hmm. is because you won't know what to eat and you won't get Turn enough of like something. Pro- the processed yeah, food and you, the junk you, you food, won't get, you, you Yeah, you won't get enough of something. Right. There's going to be something you might lack because you're not eating meat. And so the main thing is protein. That's the main thing you might lack. You have to eat... Like you have to make sure that everything you're cooking with has a good amount of protein and it, that can calculate to how much protein your body needs per day. Right. Because your body needs a certain – I mean you know this. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. Yeah. But um, she helped Haley a lot and helped Haley figure out what um, she can eat. and yeah. what. So it's good for Haley does eat a lot of the processed foods and I try to tell her like – it's just as bad for you as and that's what a lot but of she doesn't do it for health do. she doesn't do it for health like i tell people all the time veganism right. isn't it's, a health thing right yeah. being vegan isn't a animals. health thing right. it is for the animals it's the only thing helping like the only thing because like, you can get fat off a vegan diet yeah. if you eat yeah if you eat too much vegan food you will get fat yeah look at john dev which i mean it's good for john dev because he's as skinny as i am right but uh stephanie feeds him out the ass like dude she makes every That's meal crazy. because he like doesn't really he's like new not new to the vegan thing he's been vegan for uh, over a year yeah but um she's been doing it way longer and she's way more knowledgeable on all the things about right. it and um so it's like he, he's been gaining I've, I've noticed a little bit he's gaining a little bit of weight and, right, it's, right. and that, that's a good thing but it could turn to when he's 30 and loses his metabolism and he, if he keeps eating like that it's gonna be bad yeah, I was like, dude, too much of a good thing is bad. I said, mm-hmm. that's why you you guys think it's meat, good you guys for meat certain is bad. Time. It's just like any fad diet, like, like keto, oh, even keto is that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, long term oh, is not red, good for red you. meat causes heart disease. Blah blah blah. I said, yeah, because these because you fat, eat a shit ton said, of yeah, it. these fat fucks in America don't stop fucking eating McDonald's cheeseburgers and yeah. don't stop eating steaks or every steaks, single right? night, yeah. dude. I eat a steak like maybe steaks and beef, maybe once a week. Yeah, I'm chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. That's why I'm, that's I'm all chicken I and turkey. Eat. Dude, yeah. I eat chicken. I eat chicken, chicken and ground turkey. I eat chicken. I eat like deli ham. Like I eat deli meats. Yeah, like, I'm, kind of, eat, I'm kind of weary about the deli like, uh, stuff. I don't give a fuck. I'll, you know, you I, worked in deli, I, so you should know. I love deli you know what I'm saying? I love deli meats. It's just like I worked I worked um, when I did uh, security at the Giant, right? I was, I was, boys, I was boys with the uh, produce. Yeah, produce, dude? Dude, man. He had dropped all the fucking um, yeah, vegetables good. back on the floor. <laughs> and then um, it was funny because he put them back in the box. And he was like, yo, everyone's grabbing the ones from the box instead of up on the thing because they think it's more fresh. <laughs> they think it's more fresh. I was like, yo, that's hilarious. No. I was like, even though they're probably cutting off the skin of it. Yeah, I mean, dude, you, but it's you, still wash, hilarious. you wash vegetables. That's true. A lot, oh, but um, I had a, a lot oh, of people listen, don't. Did Alyssa tell you about I got into a mini, mini Facebook argument? With who? A couple. Uh, one of – a girl we met through Niche. I met oh, her. Okay. I met her. I, I forget her name. Um, I met her through going to the hospital to see Niche all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, she posted this thing on Facebook a while back and said, I have a question for you guys. Uh, do you wash your chicken before you eat – before you cook it? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? And – Every single person's like, yeah, ew, you grimy motherfucker. Like, you washing your chick, not washing your chicken. Like, that's gross. And I ca- I had to comment because I worked in the meat department. Like, yeah. I was a butcher. I was like, dude. I was like, no. I was like, no, you do not wash your chicken. I said, it is way more bad for oh, you. I- no, no, no. It's because <laughs> you know what? It oh, spreads you know bacteria. It? it spreads bacteria. That's you know why I do it. Not to it. wash it, but it, you know what? It ke- it gets the fat off. Yeah, quickly. cut it. Cut it off. I do. Cut I do the both. Fat off. Well, I, I do both. I did that for a living. Cutting yeah. the fat off chicken. No, I do you both. You can do that. Do that. Don't wash. But it, it comes off easier. Washing it. Washing it spreads the bacteria to your hands. Water splatters on you while you're washing your chicken on your clothes. Yeah. You just throw that shirt in your room. 
Yeah. W- w- and it's going to lead to this, lead to that. It's going to get But I'm all different, of- though. I don't care about bacteria. Yeah. Like, that don't bother me. I don't do it for that reason. It, it'll bother you when you die from I'm not gonna die, though. illness. I'm Superman. I got the stomach flu last <laughs> year from going to the Goodwill bins with not washing my hands. No, I don't do so, that. That's dude, another thing, too, man. Yeah. Like, people wash their hands too much. Nah. I, I wash my hands an appropriate amount. Because I, I used like to get when? sick. No, I got sick all the time. Um, after going to the bathroom, after being... After touching your own dick? Like, after going to the bathroom in, like, a restaurant. Like, not in my own house. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, in yeah. a restaurant. If I'm not oh, in public. Do when you're in public... Dude, that's just fucking disgusting. That is so... But I do this. I, so I hit the thing like this. I'll touch my own penis. Okay. If you do, I mean, that's fine. That and works. Then, yeah. I and mean, then touch, I, I don't... That's the one. See, I don't... Haley yells at me for... And I put my sleeve on and I touch the thing... <laughs> Yeah, I touch the handle on yeah. the way out. But I don't give a fuck. Like but people, you know how many people touch that? You know how many grimy ass dudes grabbing their ball sack, their sweaty balls in a bar? You know how much I do and not care. That's just you got to think you about got one it. Though, life. But you got to think about it. You got to think. Dude. You got to live. I used to be like that too, dude. I used to be like that too until I worked in a grocery store for over a year and I work around kids. And I'm, I get sick all the time. And I'm like, dude, why the fuck am I getting sick all the time? And no, I never get sick. I started washing my hands and yeah. I stopped getting sick. And the washing the chicken thing, uh, Alyssa had seen that conversation because everyone started laughing at me on the post. Like, ew, he doesn't wash his chicken. Ha ha, loser. Mind you, I was, a, I was a butcher for like over a year. Yeah. So like, who are you going to listen to? Some random black lady on Facebook who barely even knows how to dial a telephone number on her phone or someone who worked around meat for over a year. Raw meat every single day. Yeah. And uh, she asked Aunt Wendy. And Aunt Wendy was like, yeah, he's right. She was like, don't wash your chicken. You should not wash your chicken. It spreads the bacteria way more. And the bacteria on raw chicken will give you worms. You can get worms. You're going to look like them little African boys with the big old tummy. Ah, I'm probably pretty good. And you're going to start pooping worms and getting... I'm pretty good. That's nasty. Wanted in here for so long. Oh, event Friday. I know we got an event going on. Yeah, I'm excited. Blake's gonna Blake's gonna come. Blake can't Blake can't drink. He uh, lacerated his liver. Ooh. Yeah, he was drunk driving and crashed into a tree. Yeah, you don't definitely don't want to drink if um. Your liver, the thing your that the special. thing that filters the alcohol out of your system, <laughs> yeah. is lacerated. I think you shouldn't do that. But um, he's down to come. I'm hyped. Uh, that's pretty sick. So how do you foresee this night going? Because um, I'm already feeling it, and I only had two. Yeah, I'm just high as shit right now. <laughs> um, I'll would definitely, I could definitely. Are you getting changed into your pink? Yeah, band? fuck yeah. Um, I'm I definitely gonna PR. drink all five rest of my beers for sure, and get probably get naked at some point in this night. Get naked, yeah, run around. I was telling um, nah, me oh. and Alyssa gonna run the pong table. That's all I gotta say. Um, not when I'm here. <laughs> that's what you said when you raced me in the Outer Banks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad about that. I hate that you just brought that up. Yo. <laughs> 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 Nope. I thought I was at, at least gonna have um, a little bit of a challenge on that race. No, man, that's why I want to know how fast. I know how fast. Go, at least go back on sand because I was wearing jeans. Yeah, you were wearing some tight jeans. You got I was some wearing thick some legs, tight so. jeans and some thick legs, and I wasn't. I wasn't completely ready. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm still that as fast as I was. Though. So My I'm sp- not as fast as I used to be. I know you're not. I know. You know, I'm, I'm fast, top heavy. I'm, I'm faster than what I used to be. So. I know. I thought my legs, so my legs would be stronger, but I thought, but I'm top, more top heavy yeah. than I used to be. That's I, why I'm six foot and weigh 135 pounds. I'm fucking a piece of paper gliding through the air. Um, there ain't nothing stopping me. <laughs> I mean, everything's stopping me when you really think about it. <laughs> a bus, wall, the wind. Wind knocked me over a few times. I don't know. I don't know. I can. I got long legs. My legs aren't like I got skinny ass legs. They look like arms. Yeah. Like so. I don't know. I don't know why I can run fast and why like I can squat more than my body weight. I feel like I shouldn't be able to do that. 
I feel like I should. That's just your strength, though, because yeah. you're a scooter. You scooter. Yeah, true. I mean, that's just that's your all, strength. That's all. But that's all. Just that's because it. you don't have big legs. Most strong people don't have big whatever it is. Yeah, yeah dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, John yeah. Doe's John Doe's watching my dog Bentley while I'm, while we're gone, and um, he tweeted the other night. He said. He said, having such a good time being Bentley's babysitter. And then Jay Kershey replied to him and said, uh, aw, send pics. <laughs> and then I commented to Hershey's. I said, yeah, dick ones. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that little red rocket. Yeah, like he a did. little he's a little, he's a real, real dude. He's a little dude, but he's he hates everyone. He's very protective of me and Haley. That's funny. Um, and he was Haley's dog before yeah, she brought yeah, him? Oh, okay. Yeah. He's the tits. He's pretty cool. I fuck with him super hard. He's a cool ass little dude. And he's fast as shit. I skate with him every day, every That's morning. Funny. Every morning I'll have a cup of coffee, and then um, I'll get him, feed him, and then he'll take a shit out back. And then I get on the cruiser. John Dev has like a has a skateboard. Then he put cruiser wheels on it, so like yeah. the real big, like more uh, softer urethane wheels. And um, I just take that around. My street, uh, you go down to the end of the street, you make a right, and then you go down this other street, and you make another right, and it just goes in a circle. Oh, okay, So, yeah, like, yeah. my street just connects to these two other ones, and you just go in a big circle, and, dude, I'll do, like, six fucking laps with him, mobbing, like, I'll be hauling ass on the skateboard, dude. And he just like, keeps up the whole time. Pushing as hard That's as crazy. I can, That's crazy, got little legs. Dude, pushing as hard as I can on the skateboard, and he's right there next to me, sprinting his little heart out. That's crazy. And then we get home, and he'll chug some water, and he'll... Boom, hit the floor. 20 minutes later, he's bringing you the ball and wants to play. Because he's so tiny, dude. Right, right. So his energy is just like, boom, comes right back. Like, Nala, Ziva, like... That's they, the opposite they, with They Ziva. run for an hour. They run and get their exercise for Ziva an hour. Ziva runs down the street. Yeah. And then she's like... <laughs> and she wants to get laid yeah, down. so a bigger dog, it takes yeah. a whole lot less, you know. No, she, the vet says she had to lose 10 pounds. And that's just because, like, we don't feed her that much. She don't look that big. But, um, Mom and Dad were saying, "Oh well, Ziva weighs more than Nala. She's way too fat." And I like, she's not way too yeah, fat. That's they over exaggerate. Shadow was way too fat. No, was- Nala. I think Nala's big for as much as they take her out. Dude, mom feeds her. Mom feeds her that's two full bowls of food a day. Yeah, see, that's I said, the thing. Mom, I don't feed Ziva that much. I said, Mom, Nala needs two cups of food a day. Yeah, I said, give her one cup in the morning, like a full cup, right? Like the size. And that's like what a I do. Measurement cup. I, I give Ziva then, three. Okay. So one yeah, early because yeah, yeah. she eats early in the morning. Yeah. When I wake up, I wake up like five or six. A whole bowl full that mom gives her is like two and a half cups. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, yo, she's eating five cups of food a day. Yeah, that's too much. I was like, dude, she's gonna die. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's gonna fucking explode. One plus day. people food. Yeah, plus people food. Ziva doesn't get people. Plus food. treats. Neither is Bentley. We do not give. Bentley yeah, I don't give Ziva people. He don't even beg. He don't even yeah. beg for it. The only time I'll, I'll give her pieces of chicken, but she can have chicken. Yeah, chicken's you know what I'm fine. Chicken, they like, make I feed her, her pills. Chicken. Like, I feed her her pills. I make this, like, little sandwich out of, like, chicken and peanut butter. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'll That's put fine. chicken in, and I'll put it, slap some peanut butter on it and stick the pill in there and just wrap it up and then put it in her mouth. Yeah. Yeah, and she takes, like, one uh, one chew, and then she'll swallow it. I'm like, yo, you need to chew your food. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully mom and dad watch this podcast and uh, get this deep. So they can they can take <laughs> take our advice. Because I was trying to tell mom, I was trying to tell her while we were home, and I was just like, dude, like, because I, I I came in uh, when yeah, we got yeah. home, and I was like, damn, I was like, Nala was oh, wait, Nala was not that small, was not this big when I was here last year. I said, there's no way, Nala looks way bigger, and they're all like, what are you talking about? And I was like, dog, her paw is like the size of my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that, I feel like that is not right. <laughs> I was like in her belly. And then dad takes her out all the time. Yeah, dad takes her out all the time. So that's the the opposite of of Ziva because I never got to – I took her out when I was unemployed every day. You know, but yeah. and then she was because last time we went to the vet, she was eighty one. Okay. And then this time we went, she was eighty nine. Okay. I was like, oh shit. Well, also, I think I think uh, Nala looks pretty big to me now because I'm so used Bentley. to Bentley. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bentley's That's twenty it. pounds. Right. So like, he's a little dude. He's a low rider. Yeah, real that's low crazy. Ground. But speaking of advice, what's like the best advice that you ever got in your life? Dad, dad gave me the best advice. Are you gonna say the same thing as mine? No. Because you never moved to California. Oh, to go to California. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to say act like you've been John there. Dev wanted me to move out there in 2016 when he did, and I was too scared. I was like, dude, I can't pay rent. Like, well, I, it was Oregon first. 
Well, uh, that doesn't even count because I bailed myself. Right. I bailed myself. Fuck that. Because it was that first. I'm glad I didn't go because that was when that was when Jay Kershey was a dirty piece of shit. Was he? He was a really gross piece of shit, and now Jake is just like a semi piece of shit <laughs> and a little bit cleaner. So I like the new Jake Kershey a lot. I'm yeah. glad I didn't live with old Jake Kershey. But um, John wanted me to move for a year, and I was like too worried, and I was like talking to a girl at the time too, and I was kind of like, I want to see where this is going. And um, I was nervous. I didn't want to like scared to leave I was, home. Like, scared, yeah, scared to leave home. Scared to leave our family. Like I've never been away from our family like that before, you know. Yeah. And we're all so close. We're a very, very tight family. Mm-hmm. And um, a year later, I like eventually just like out of the blue decided like I broke things off with that girl because I found out she was a psychopath. And um, yeah, that always works. So broke up with her, and I was like, dude, like what the fuck am I doing here, man? I was like, I feel like I should move to California. And um, so I just was on my laptop one day, boom, booked a flight, booked a one-way flight. Just didn't even tell nobody. Just booked a one-way flight to San Diego. And um, I text, I took a Snapchat and sent it to John Dev, and he was like, are you fucking kidding me, man, blah, blah, blah. And then as I started telling people and stuff and as I started planning my move and it was like more coming to an end, uh, it was a couple nights before I left and Dad was like sitting with me talking downstairs and – he was just like, he's like, dude, why not? Why not move? Yeah, there's nothing here. For one, dad's never been on our side for anything. Anything. Dad's always on the opposing team side when it comes down to what we want to do, you know? Yeah. He's always negative Nancy. Mm-hmm. But for a good reason, right. most of the time. Yeah, but yeah. this time around, he was like, dude, why not, dude? He's like, you don't have a girlfriend holding you down. You're not going to school. You're just working at a grocery store. Like, dude, why not go out there and, like, try to do something with your life? Like, mm-hmm. he's like, because clearly you're not doing anything here. And I was like, damn, right. you're right. And um, then he told me, he's like, dude, when you go out there, he's like, there could come a time where you're going to want to come home. He's like, where you're going to think that you need to come home, not just want to come. You think that that's the best decision mm-hmm. is for you to leave California and come home. And he was like, don't. Yeah. He's like, don't. He's like, don't leave. Mm-hmm. He's like, grind it out. I mean, mind you, I've never felt like that a day in my life. Yeah. <laughs> never in the three years I've been living out there was I like, I want to move back to Delaware. Because you also know what it's like outside of California. Yeah. You know, it's not like you oh, grew yeah, up and I, lived yeah. in California. Yeah, it's yeah. so different yep. doing that. Yeah. And it's not even, I'm not saying I don't want to go back to Delaware because California is so great. California sucks. California yeah, sure is one of the it. worst places in the entire <laughs> world, dude. The worst of everything. Yeah, yeah. It's an awful, awful, awful place to live. Yeah. But it's beautiful. Days it's are beautiful. nice. I can ride my scooter every single day. Never have to worry about the weather. When you say it's awful, are you talking about more people? Or are you talking about like traffic? People, or? traffic, prices, um, all of the above, yeah. anything else above, any yeah. of that, anything that has to deal with anything, basically. It's got, I mean, it's got iconic places I mean, you cool. can it, see. It's got, the, like, it has all main, that sight. The, it's a nice tourist attraction. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what people say. Like, oh, dude, I would love to vacation there, but I don't want to live there. Right. And uh, a lot of dudes who I know that grew up out there, they feel that way right now. Mm-hmm. They want to get the fuck out of California. And just want to visit. Right. And I mean, that's why I love Delaware so much. I talk Delaware up so hard. But then, and then, like, I come here and I love it. I love everything. I'm like, damn, like, I miss these roads. I miss, like, these stores. I miss these food places, blah, blah, blah. But I if miss you lived these here, people. You would. <laughs> and it's like, dude, after the weather, the, ugh. literally, it's, it's usually like two days before I fly back home. Yeah. And I'm just like, holy fucking shit, I can't wait to go can't home. Can't wait, right. I'm like, dude, I can't wait to go home. But when I first get here, I'm like, dude, fuck San Diego. Like, Delaware, baby. What's up, bro? Like, but like, it's it's going to be like that anywhere. Anywhere you go. Yeah. Well, anywhere this is, you go. You know what's crazy is like, this is the first time, like, leaving Disney World that I wasn't ready to come home. Did you cry? I didn't cry. Damn. But I was like, dude, I just don't want to go back. <laughs> I don't want to go back to that life. You know? I mean, I love the life I have here. But not in this place. Maybe that's how I felt when I visited San Diego in yeah, 2016. Yeah. I was like, dude, fuck that, dude. Yeah, yeah. I got to go home. Mm-hmm. I got to go home and start this new job at a grocery store. Yeah. I was like, fucking kill me. I used to wake up every day. 
every morning I'd wake up in mom and dad's basement that year, 2016, and I would scream fuck at the top of my lungs. <laughs> like I would just wake up and be like, fuck, Whoa, scream yeah, so man. loud to get the anger out, dude. And yeah. like I always said, my main motto that got me through my life in Delaware was, life's all about cashing a check and keeping a gun out of your mouth. Hey. That's what my boss told me at Super G. That's what he told me. He was like, you know what yeah. life's all about, man? I was, like, like, his I was like, sucks, having man. fun. I was like, having fun and doing drugs. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> yeah. He was like that. And he was like, no. Nah. He just said the paycheck thing. And I was like, damn, you're right. He was like, dude, he's like, the only way I get through this is by hating it. He's like, you don't get through working in a grocery store loving it. But that's the thing. It don't have to be like that. People I know. That's make what, what they do. Yeah. I love what I do now. That's I wake up every day and I'm like, I love my life. I'm exactly. like, fuck, like I'm broke as shit, but like, I love my exactly. life, dude. And like, that's what some people worry about too much is like, oh, the money's not here, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, do something that you love to do. Yeah. Like, you don't have to make money doing it. Yeah, find something like what I do. I'm doing stuff that I love to do, and I don't make money doing it. Facts. But I have something uh, where for? I'm bringing, yeah, I have something that I'm driving for and working for, but I also have a job where... It's just for my income. Yeah, my yeah. income to like you know to help my family and yep. to you know so like you know so I'm not just pushing everything to the side and be like I'm gonna go for my dream. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I'm really being smart about it. Yeah. And I'm working before I have to go and then after I have to and after I come back mm-hmm. to on like the road I want to go to. Yeah. You know, and you know that's what people don't get. People think like. Life's all about, dude, you got to make a lot of money so you can have good benefits. And so, yeah. like, you don't have to pay for this. And so, like, you can get married and have kids and buy a house and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, have fun working the same job for the rest of your life, married to someone you hate, having shitty-ass kids. Have fun, dude. Yeah. Uh, something in my mouth. We got dog hair in your mouth. Maybe. But, like, dude, <laughs> fuck that shit. Like... I don't want, like, yeah, I want to get married and have kids and buy a house one day, but, like, yeah. I don't want to do it the same way everyone else did. Yeah. Like, I look at, dude, I get on Facebook every day, and I'm telling you, 95% of girls I went to high school with are all RNs. Yeah. Or going to school to be an RN. Like, mm-hmm. dog, every single one. Dog nurses, yeah, yeah, that's annoying. And then all their boyfriends, <laughs> all their boyfriends work, like, construction. Oh. Or, like... Or, like, something dealing with that. Some manly work. Like, you know, I'm a man, so I do man's work. Yeah. Like, that type of shit. I'm just like, yeah. you know how many people in Delaware are doing that same exact... Like, does that not make you feel like well, shit? Well, they work at a bank, or they do... Yeah, like... like yeah, they're making money, Yeah, but they're cool. going to be there for their whole life. <laughs> cool, you're making money. I don't you're, give a shit. I don't yeah. give a shit about money. Yeah. I get to wake up every day, hang out with my friends, yeah. do what I love and get paid for it Mm -hmm. my boss is one of my best friends in the entire world i hang out with him constantly yeah smoking at his apartment playing ps4 all night and watching movies and dude like i'm a part of a family like the scooter farm is a family dude like and and that's what is different between any other scooter shop because there's Mm -hmm. only one competitive scooter shop and it's in la and the only reason like they're really they sell a lot of shit online their website is phenomenal their okay. website is fucking amazing but they don't have anyone that comes into their shop yeah and then when people do go into their shop those people come to our shop mm-hmm. and are oh well we took this to the vault and uh they said they knew how to fix it but like they kind of fucked it up a little bit more and then we <laughs> have to fix it and we're the ones who actually know what we're doing Jeez, so like yeah. we're a family dude like yeah, and that's man. what i cherish dude i cherish that i cherish Having a job that I love, working with people that I love, and we're, we all have the same goal in life. We all want to like settle down eventually and stop mm-hmm. partying all the time. Well, obviously not. Like I'm not gonna stop partying. Like so I'm always gonna have parties with my friends where we're gonna. I'm gonna. Oh yeah, there's no. Yeah, you, do don't that, you know, stop but it's not. It's, all, it's always gonna get mellower and mellower. You know. Yeah. But like I, I wanna, I wanna do this shit on my own. You know, like I wanna do this shit. Be like, like no one else in our family has ever done anything like that. You know, like hey, that, I'm trying to be the first one. I'm trying I mean, to <laughs> but like, but that's what I love about me and you yeah. is that we're both not trying to do the social norm bullshit that right. everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, if our parents could have afforded to send us to college, like every other kid we went to school with, I probably would have failed out. I probably would have too. But I would have gone. I would have gone. I would have been yeah. like, hell yeah, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to fuck mad girls and do a lot of drugs. Yeah, man. But I did that anyways. But I didn't get the education. 
could right. got, could could done that and get an education. That yeah. would be cool. But um, but for yeah. what though? But yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? What is that education going to get you? Like it couldn't have gotten you anywhere where it is where you are now. Yeah, exactly. You know, the this same is where just like someone someone told me like, oh, well, you should go to school for business. I'm like. Why? So I can miss out four years on actually trying to own a business, <laughs> exactly, and dude. learning that way. I could just learn just as going I go. to school. I could just learn as you go, man. You no, know, I've I've been with people that went to school for like personal training stuff, like what do they call it, exercise science or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and they they're like looking at me like, oh, why do you do it like that, or why do you do it like that? I'm like, what? Like you don't learn this stuff. Like, <laughs> you don't learn certain things. You learn by the book. Yeah. You don't learn what actually works what for actually someone. Works for a, per- a real person. A person, like, yeah, what like are you gonna do? Guy. They don't teach you how to train a pregnant person. Yeah, you know, you can go by the book, but then when you have a pregnant person thrown at you, what are you gonna do? When when they can't do the things, they can't do it yeah, right. Exactly. So you know, you gotta. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to yeah. a lot of school people. was great for some people, and I would definitely, if I had kids, I would definitely push them. I want them, them to go to school. Fact. I want them to go to yeah, school. Hell yeah, dude. But also, I want to pay attention to them and see if school's for them. Yeah, because it wasn't for us. It <laughs> definitely wasn't for me. Yeah, definitely wasn't for any of us. <laughs> you know, but... I didn't even try. That's how, that's how much I knew that school wasn't for me, is I didn't even try. You oh, guys, you and Alyssa know. both tried. I mean, Try you, what? I mean, you went to, you got a certificate in something. You like did. Oh, you got, I tried that because I you, found something I like to do. You got that. some sort of education after high school. The only education I've ever gotten after high school was just like. Yeah. I don't know. I've well, read I mean, a lot. because I, I found something books. I like to do. Yeah. And then mom found that place and kind yeah, of like, yeah. hey, you're going here. I was like, okay. But, yeah, but. I mean, dude, that's why I'm like, I mean, I probably could go to school and do well. I could probably go to school and maybe. I mean, living, I have no desire not living that. with who I live with now. Like, right. not living in the house I live in now. I could never go to school because, like... Distraction. Very big distraction. And, Man. Um, we're all terrible with distractions. That's why I smoke weed. Because it focuses me on things. I don't get so distracted. But I was just lazy. But I'm not lazy with the work I do now. Yeah. The opposite of what I was in school. The complete yeah. opposite. I work my fucking ass off. Like in front of my computer twenty four seven. If I'm not in front of my computer, I'm in front of my cam- behind my camera. So ditto. It's good life. I don't mind good it. life, man. All right, man. Let's get out of here. Let's go party. Yep. Try and drink some beers. All right. Let's do it. All right. Love you. Love you, baby.